uh, tonight, I won't be before you long, but the Lord was dealing with me all week and I've been thinking about what should I speak about and what came to me was servitude, which I think is important that we know in this time that we're living why we should serve. Mm -hmm. yes. So I wrote down a few principles of servitude that we'll go over. Amen. The base scripture will come from Luke 22, verse 24 to 30. When you get there, say amen. If you're not there, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke 22, 24 to 30. Amen. Amen. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. Mm. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. Mm -hmm. mm. But not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. Mm -hmm. And he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table, or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Mm -hmm. Yet I am among you as the one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my Father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table, in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm. When I read that, it was obvious that the disciples didn't have a clue at that point mm -hmm. because you think you walk with somebody, you know, that has the truth and everything and he's teaching you, guiding you, mm -hmm. but yet you really don't get it. Mm. So he had to kind of break it down when he said, greatest among you, let him be as the younger. Amen. So almost be, have humility Amen. in understanding why you serve. And for who is greater? Who sits at the table? He who serves. Mm -hmm. When I think about that, I wrote down a few things. You know, servitude is a condition in which one lacks liberty especially to determine mm -hmm. one's course of action or way of life. Uh -huh. Another definition, a right by which something owned by one person is subject mm -hmm. to a specified use or enjoyment by another. What's funny is everything we do in life is always a service to something. Yeah. So we always have to subject ourselves to something, right. whether it be work, our husbands, mm -hmm mates in some way, shape, or form, okay. even our children. Mm -hmm. Service means to perform services for, to repair or provide maintenance for. So when I look at that, isn't that what we're doing as children of God? Amen. Amen. Maintenancing the people yes. in the way of the word until the day of glory. To repair or provide maintenance. And a lot of times we find ourselves repairing mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of broken hearts, bro broken spirits. And sometimes we, I don't think we truly understand servicing because we'll get in our own way about it. Amen. And kind of revert back to why can't I just have my own Amen. way? Amen. Subjection. As I have wrote down a few principles. The first one is subjection. Subject one that is placed, subjection or subject, excuse me, one that is placed under authority or control. Mm -hmm. We're under the authority of God once we accept him, accept his son, died for our sins, becomes our savior. So once we're under subjection, then we have to attain some type of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Attained by teaching, the fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or association. That's why we don't forsake the gathering of one another mm -hmm. because 
that is our association, like minds, like spirit, in order to gain the knowledge from those that are put before us, like our leadership. But in order to get in leadership, and we'll get there, you have to go through the process. Amen. Yes. Amen. If you can't subject yourself to something, you can't willfully do or fulfill a purpose. Mm. Once you subject, and then you continue in the way of knowledge and learning, mm -hmm. which sometimes we we don't like to go through. Sometimes we think we can just jump into a level and just begin mm -hmm. and don't right. have the first clue about really yeah. utilizing what God has given Amen. us. Then we build off what we've gained the knowledge, which means to develop according to a yeah. systematic plan mm -hmm. by a definite process or on a particular base. That is the word of God. It's a systematic process that he put in place for us to know step by step what to do, especially once we come into knowing him. Uh -huh. We like to skip that. Just because I said I do to him, now I got all things and it doesn't work like that. That's right, that's right. Once you build, then you break. Then we get to character. Because mm -hmm. everything that you learned everything you've subjected yourself to, everything now that you're trying to build upon, which is built upon him, yeah. you have to get into right character Amen. because we are supposed to be in the likeness of him. Yes. Character means one of the attributes or features that make up and distinguish the individual. One of the attributes, Christ-like, like-minded, one spirit, one body, yes. or features that make up and distinguish the individual. Mm. What I've been noticing, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory, yes. Mm. But once we come into knowing Christ, in order to be effective and to touch the body, mm -hmm. everyone we're supposed to touch around, Gentile or Christian, mm -hmm. we have to be in a right mind, right. a right spirit. Yeah. We have to be showing the true love of God. I Amen. think people like to work the word without the love. Amen. <laughs> love is what really conquers. That is what the word says. Yes. If you have not love, you have nothing. Amen. That's right. I can't be exuding Christianity and then in the next breath, I'm cussing someone out. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. I say, I'm a servant of the Lord, but yet I turn my nose up when somebody do something Amen. that I'm not too fond Amen. of. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So character is important. Yeah. Very important. After building character next, then from that we get to experience because then we start to apply these things. Practical knowledge, skill, or practice derived from direct observation of or participate participation in events or in a particular activity mm -hmm. in the ministry that's why we should always be present yeah functions yes. under our leadership so that we can be cultivated Amen. in what's been given to us Amen. participating whenever we can pressing in order to participate mm -hmm. because you never know what you might miss that was for you in order to utilize in your walk. That's right. You know, if you come in contact with somebody, something could have been preached that night or th that day that you would have needed in order to touch the person that, that you came upon the very next day at work, right. on the street, or That's anything. Right. Right. So once you've gone through all these different things, then and only then, the last principle we come to is leadership. You can't lead unless you really knew how to serve. Mm -hmm. The office or position of a leader has the capacity to lead. And where do he get that? He gets that by building principles from the word of God. Yes. And him subjecting to his God to be taught. A leader is a member chosen by his party to manage party activities in a legislative body. Mm -hmm. 
as a le legislative body, the body or department exercises the power and function of legislating mm -hmm. to carry out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can't carry out what we don't know Amen. or what Amen. we haven't learned. Amen. So we can't step in a form of leadership until we've actually learned the value keys of life Amen. through Amen. the word of God. Amen. When we look back, Moses served, Abraham served, yes. God himself served. Yes. Amen. Yes. When he created the earth, that was a service yes. to the earth. Amen. And then mm. gave it to Adam to have dominion Amen. to do what? Amen. Serve it. Yes. Yes. Adam threw it away and caused us to go in bondage. And in that bondage, the Lord had to come with the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, in order to regain what was his from the beginning. And through that, we had freedom. I look at slavery, you know, the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, they were already in a mindset of serving, mm -hmm. but they were serving man. Amen. That's right. That's right. So they were given a choice to what? Number one, subject themselves mm -hmm. to either stay where they were yes. or follow a God they were unsure about. Mm -hmm. That was going to do nothing but give him freedom. Yes. They made a choice. They left. And then those that time in the desert, he was giving them knowledge, increasing their faith, mm -hmm. allowing them to see who he was, you know, through his leadership, who Moses himself had to serve and, le and learn and subject himself. And he began to build upon that. But the funny thing I think about even slavery of blacks mm -hmm. and different slavery events, you know, we got so used to being in bondage mm -hmm. uh -huh. that we really couldn't even accept freedom. Amen. Amen. When slaves were emancipated, Amen. they still stayed servants mm -hmm. because that's all they knew. Mm -hmm. So when the um, children of Israel felt that little bit of lack of faith when Moses was on the mountain too long, but as far as they're concerned, they knew to just waver and just go back to what was familiar. No real guidance, no real understanding. Uh -huh. It was just familiar. Uh -huh. I thought it was funny that to them, they thought bondage was having left what they knew mm. to go somewhere where they mm. didn't understand. Mm. But it was free will, it was open, it was freedom. Yes. The Lord never treated them the way Pharaoh treated them. That's right. So sometimes we have to go through this process to change our mindset Amen. to understanding what God is doing in our life mm -hmm. and understand not to hold those things that keep us bound, but to really trust and have increased faith to let it go so that God can do what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. I want to go to 1 Corinthians 7, 21-31. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. Mm -hmm. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's free man. Right. Likewise, he who is called while free in Christ, slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Mm. Now, cons you know, I'll end there. So, in understanding that, it wasn't about really approving slavery in the sense that man looks at it. It was just an obedience and honor to God in what he was doing a new thing in man for his namesake. 
sometimes we can't lose that same mindset that we have in what we do under man versus what God is doing. So once we can lose that, then we'll have a little more clarity. But the only way to do that is to continue to subject ourselves to the word and understand. Let them touch our mind and touch our heart with truth. Yes. I wrote down, God serviced the earth, creating all the heavens and all within, and gave man, Adam, the man to service it. And what he did with it, you know, was handed over to Satan, as we talked about, and Jesus had to return and atone for Adam's failure to regain the kingdom. When we think about bondage, bondage means subjugated to a controlling person or force. Freedom is the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice mm -hmm. or action. Liberation from slavery or restraint or from the power of another. That is what God did. Mm -hmm. There's no necessity in God. Yeah. When it becomes a necessity, it's because of our own will of what we know he's done for us. Amen. There is no co coercion. Man always has to coerce us Amen. into Amen. doing things yes. all the time. Amen. And we tend to fall for it. Mm. God don't coerce you. He just sit there Amen. and let you figure it out. Mm. Do you want this or do you want that? But when you go to that, don't say it's me. Thank you. Amen. You chose it. Mm. There's no constraints in the choice. Mm -hmm. You're freedom and you, you're free and open to do as you please and as one chooses to do. Mm -hmm. But if your mindset has been changed, you truly have subjected yourself to the knowledge and truth and understanding, mm -hmm. then your choice will be clear of where you want to go. Amen. And there won't be any constraints in it. It's the work of the enemy that likes to constrain us and trying to figure out which way we should go. Mm -hmm. But if we rebuke him at those moments that he comes, then we can continue to walk in the way of the Lord and honor him. Amen. Amen. And I'll end with this. John 12, 26. For his service, we honor him back with our service. Mm -hmm. God is a wonderful God. Yes, he is. How can one not want to serve him as he serves us on a daily basis mm -hmm. and continue to keep us yes. at all times? 1226, if anyone serves me, mm -hmm. this is the end result. This is the prize, yes. but do we not get it? Mm -hmm. If anyone serves me, let him follow me mm -hmm. and where I am, there my servant will be also. Yes. Mm -hmm. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Lord is glorified in all that he does. Yes. If we follow the key principles, servitude, understanding why we need to subject to him, why we need to attain knowledge through his word, once we attain the knowledge, continue to build off of it in every aspect of our lives. Once we're building, this should cause a character change. And through that character change, we begin to experience in him. And from that experience, then we can lead, become yes. leaders in him. Amen. And doing nothing but what he does for Amen. us. Serve. Yes. Serve the people. Serve. Amen. Everything is a service. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.